it's not a one-way street. We will we'll learn a lot from what's happening in PMG. And, and one of the things I'm doing here is listening as well as talking about our experiences, good and bad, and, and where we head from here. And, uh, and then listening to their experiences as well. I think there are similar sets of challenges that they face. Um, of course, the context is different. I mean, they are the minority also in the Australian uh, uh, community, whereas we are the majority and we have, you know, our leaders are also all Papua New Guinea's indigenous people. But how can we translate that into actual making sure that we pay attention to doing what we can to help our people to make that transition from being subsistence farmers to living in the villages to actually becoming entrepreneurs. We, we have the capability to do it, but we haven't really mobilised and really uh, got ourselves together to, to get that right. Well, it's a problem with, with a lot of colonised uh, people around the world. We have, uh, you know, we, we have been marginalised and and we, all, you know, I look at 20 years ago, 25 years ago, when I was a young bloke, you sit there and you say, "Oh, business, business, and commercial activity is a white man's game." Well, we had to, uh, we had to change that mindset because if we were going to lift ourselves out of poverty, if we were going to take the leadership that we needed within our communities, then it was a mind shift that we can do these things. This is not about white men. Yes, white men can do this. White women can do it. Chinese can do it, Japanese can do it, Africans can do it, and the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders in Australia can do it. I mean, it was quite interesting, you know, especially to understand uh, how the indigenous business uh, conduct itself in Australia and what we can do in, uh, in, in Papua New Guinea. There's a lot of uh, training and a lot of skills that needs to be developed uh, to really, you know, help our local farmers, you know, uh, uh, to venture into, into different uh, businesses. Especially the, the extractive industry, where the indigenous have faced a similar situation where uh, there's been a mineral boom. Uh, and and for, for me, you know, my group, Trans Wonderland, we're from uh, uh, oil and gas, you know, development as well. So when those resources are depleted, then we are really left with nothing. Uh, so I, I'd like to use that you know, as an opportunity to reinvest in you know, the royalties and the equities that we, we, we get and, and put them back, back into agriculture and a more sustainable uh, business. So that's, that's a big challenge. I think we need to minimize or, or eradicate the barriers to entry. And, and I think, for example, like if, if someone is to formally register a business at IPA, you know, there, there is a cost. So for some small businesses, it can be uh, you know, maybe unaffordable for them. So, so I think they, they need to look at that and maybe for maybe relax a little bit the, the regulations around the business registrations for SMEs. Uh, I believe that everything rises and falls with leadership. And as I look at across the spectrum of PNG, I think we really need to put a lot more effort into ethical leadership which is very, very critical. We've got a generation of leaders who have come through and held this country together, but we have yet to transfer some of those things and build up a cadre of new generation of leaders.